This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. More on them later. Welcome back. We've got the Forge Hot ready for another fun project at the Anvil today, which is a caltrop. Their first recorded use was by the armies of Alexander the Great in 300 BC, and what they are is a steel four-pronged spike that was thrown onto the battlefield so that approaching foot soldiers or horses would end up with steel spikes in their feet or hooves, which would suck, especially if they were barbed. Since then, caltrops have been used throughout history, through the medieval ages, through to the Second World War, and even, frankly, today. You remember that last time you went out for groceries a little bit too fast and the police tried to pull you over but you really wanted that ham sandwich? Well, the spiky thing they threw out into the road to puncture your tires is effectively a caltrop. It's gonna be an interesting little challenge to make it out of one piece. A little brain bender, and I like these type of forging projects. I'm pretty sure that no matter which tine you look at on the caltrop, when you look at it straight on, it's gonna look like this. On all the points, we're gonna wanna do this. Make a taper, bend it over, and then flatten it into the little bar. And I'm not certain this is the way that's gonna work, but method one for how we form it is gonna be taking some flat bar, forging three splits in one end, one split in the other, and bending and manipulating all the pieces around. I have a gut feeling that whatever feels simplest as a method of making them is going to be right, because the caltrop would have had to be made very quickly, as cheaply as possible, in medieval times to be thrown on the battlefield with as little care or concern for the cost of them. And so whoever came up with this design of a caltrop would have had to have an efficient means of making it at the anvil. So I know for certain there's got to be a simple way to make this actually quite complex and unconventional shape. Uh, uh, beep, beep, boop, boop. Ah! Got it laid out cold, let's turn up the heat and make it hot. I'm actually gonna change strategy a little bit. I'm quite nervous about cracks occurring in the corners of these cuts. So I'm gonna see if I can shove a small round punch in there, make a little bit of a round hole in the corners. This is a teeny weeny punch and a really big bit of steel, so the punch heats up instantly. I get two hits before it's too hot to hit, so I gotta cool it down in a bucket of water. Wow, it's looking very holy. I'm splitting it from two sides, from the back and from the front. That way the curve is kind of evenly balanced between both sides. That's really satisfying when that opens up. Look at that go. Ah! Ah! Everything's happening wrong. I also sailed my chisel into the anvil. Whoopsie daisy. That's a problem, but the anvil is untouched. I'm pretty happy with how progress is looking. I like that we've got plenty of meat in these little corners. I think that's gonna be helpful to mean that we can forge out the shapes, avoid cracks, and also avoid any thin and weak spots. Next step, I think is gonna be squaring up the tines, forging them out, making sure they're straight and neat. That's difficult. That little bend, that's gonna be hard to get out. Somehow, everything has ended up a different length, so we've got to cut it down. It's really quite funny to me that I have just spent half a day making what could be cut out on a plasma table 
in three minutes. A very simple cross. But where I do beat the plasma table is it can't make it pointy and bar. I'm absolutely in love with how this is looking. How cool is that? What mean looking barbs are they? This thing is gonna be awesome. And looking at the picture, the last job is just bending it. How much damage will it do? Maybe I'll just try a box. Wah! I'll go ahead and decline the invitation for that in my foot. Ooh! Okay. Yeah, you tell that cardboard. It's always a pleasure to share the making of this cool stuff with you. I really would love to hear from you what you want us to make next. But now in the 21st century, there's less of a risk of getting a caltrop in the foot than there is of getting a hacker on your internet. This episode has been sponsored by NordVPN and I bloody love the product. Over the last little while I've been doing a ton of traveling, been in dodgy places on dodgy Wi-Fi networks, and just getting the uh, heebie-jeebies about getting hacked and being able to have NordVPN on my phone, my laptop, six devices in fact, with one account. It's made me feel a lot safer while I've been doing important business things on the internet, like watching my crypto portfolio fall into the toilet. The way it works is on your iOS, Android, Mac, or PC, you got an app. On this app, you can pick and choose between 60 plus countries all over the world and 5,200 servers. Bish, bash, bosh, you now send encrypted data to and from that server, which acts as an intermediary between you and the websites you browse, which means your internet service provider can't see the data you're sharing back and forth. Neither can a hacker, neither can the government. So you can feel safe to research dairy and edgy stuff without ending up on a watch list. It doesn't throttle your speed at all. Nord has a strict no data logging policy and you can get 73% off a two year plan, just $3.16 a month. When you go to nordvpn.com forward slash forge, you'll also get an extra month for free. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.